live from Houston, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's celebration of women in computing. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We're joined today by Ashley Connors. She is a student board member at the Anita Borg Institute and also a PhD student at Brown University in Computational Biology. Also her sister, Chelsea Connard, who is a junior at DePauw University majoring in computer science and economics. Welcome both of you. It's a sister act today. Yes, thank you. I understand that you're actually your whole family is here at Grace Hopper. All our siblings, yes. Uh, we have a sister between us and a brother. So it started with you, uh, Ashley. You're, you're, you are now a student board member, but you, mm -hmm. your first Grace Hopper, you came as a freshman at DePauw. In 2010, yes, it, when it was much smaller. Um, and I was open to the world of, that is computer science for women. And um, kind of Grace Hopper itself opened its arms to me, uh, showing me that I was, I was going to do biochemistry. And uh, that's kind of the only realm that I knew. Uh, but I did know that I wanted to look at problems, technical problems and in biology. And there's no other way to do that but through computer science. And so how can it be accessible? how could I have come into a field where no one that I knew he was even doing computer science and it was this male dominated field surrounding by, surrounded by the questions of video games. Um, and Grace Hopper showed me that there are people that want, to, they have us in mind. And I wanted to share this with my, my siblings and say, guys, you need to experience this. And I went back to my school and did a few like uh, workshops for scholarship writing, resume building, robotics uh, interests, and what HCI is. You know, you teach people all of these things because the resources are all here. And so giving, kind of paying it forward is what I was doing. And of course, being around my siblings, now they're doing the same. Yeah. So yeah. you are, but now, and now, so that was, that was a long time ago, <laughs> and now you are a board member. So, mm -hmm. so what are some of the initiatives that you're working as a board member in terms of outreach and paying it forward, as you say? Yes, so uh, one of the very big things that we're trying to do, I'll talk about too, because I'm a student, we're really working with academics to share with the students that are coming here. Uh, specifically the millennials, which I'll talk about in a second, but we want to explain that although we have amazing companies and amazing work that you can do in a company or in a governmental institution, there's also the side of academia and advancing your degree past undergraduate. And there are many great schools that are here wanting to support and interact with, engage with, you know, engage there with There are a lot of us. panels about cultivating women academics yes, and making yes. sure that that is so a I'm, career I'm, path that's known. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on academic side. We're also trying to figure out how can Anita Borg, how can the Anita Borg Institute and Grace Hopper really uh, focus on millennials, reach out to millennials. What is, what is that avenue that we need to embark upon? So we have a millennial right here <laughs> sitting in our midst. You, you are one, of course, yes. too. But you're you're the target market now. So do you do you feel that you're that you are being reached out to? And, and what are what is your experience of the conference? This is your third yeah. one, Chelsea. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest secret to bringing women to computer science is having that discussion around it and sharing that information. And from a personal perspective, it was my sister who reached out to me, and I've heard it echoed throughout women the past three days is that it just takes one voice, just one woman to really, you know, one woman to really show uh, the, the power of computer science. And um, and then also to say, I believe in you. Oh, absolutely. And and to really think of that possibility. For myself, I'd started an undergraduate really thinking economics, business, that was, that was my place. And computer science didn't quite make sense. But until Ashley showed me computer science, I just, I took the risk and there are companies here that are fusing economics and computer science in ways that I could have never imagined. And uh, I guess the biggest secret to millennials is just talking to them and just really inspiring them to know that it, I mean, there's so many possibilities. Well, and you are part of this trend of multidisciplinary majors mm -hmm. with not just CS, but computer science and economics, computer yeah. science and biology, computer science and policy. Mm -hmm. What is driving this trend in the sense of, 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 of doing computer science mm -hmm. along with another discipline? I think, I, I, I mean, to preface, we actually went, but I go to a liberal arts school, so it's almost part of my fabric is to, to try and blend subjects together. But I think computer science is, I mean, it's pervasive in our world today, and it has so much power that it can be fused with other subjects, and it can make a, a genuine difference. And we can look at problems technically, and we can 
more statistics and big data and there's just so much power behind computer science that I firmly believed it, it, it can really be blended with all types of topics to make differences. Let's talk about mentorship. Mm -hmm. This is, research shows that this is such an important component mm -hmm. for women in technology to have someone higher up yeah. the, the, the career chain saying I believe in you, helping you along the way, helping you make decisions mm -hmm. when you come to crossroads in your professional career. Do you have a mentor? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what has that mentor given to you? Yeah. Well, I'm getting chills because my mentor's <laughs> right next to me. I mean, Ashley's this is a this yeah. is a beautiful story. <laughs> I mean, I love this. But she's the I mean she's the reason I believe what I what I believe today, and I ha I have and I'm flashing back in my life to seeing Ashley's eyes shining through me and just really feeling her her heart and mine. And um, and I think mentorship is, is is crucial to really allowing someone to just believe in themselves to 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 make that next step. And um, I had a funny story that I hope to share. Oh, Ashley's crying. I'm going to cry. Too. I, had a, you are. I had a funny story I hope to share because it makes such a big difference, really. And I don't think people really see the power in um, mentorship at times. But here at Grace Hopper, I was on my way to see my mentor, Ashley. And on the way, I bumped into someone for a split second. And I knew I, I knew her, so I stopped her. And, and it hit me that we'd met this, this past summer at Harvard Business School for um, a program for women in computing. And she was at Grace Hopper. And I mentioned it to her to, and like really encouraged her to come and she came. So I guess. So you were mentoring that woman yeah, yeah. who was your age, yeah. but, but yeah. yeah. But, but the point is like just that person took my advice and I think half the battle of mentorship is just having that mentee just take the, the risk too because um, my, my words don't mean much until she really believes in them too. So you are lucky in that your mentor is your older sister. Yeah. What about the people who don't have an older sister or who yeah. just aren't as, as fortunate as you? How do you how do you recommend that they go out and find a mentor? I mean, do you do you do you identify it and make it part of your strategy or is it a more organic process? What what are your thoughts, Ashley, weigh in here yeah, too? Yeah, so I'd I'd love to speak to a few things. Um, uh, last night, uh, actually, there was a kind of a mentorship event for the GHC scholars. There's uh, scholarships that you can apply for f to come to Grace Hopper uh, as a student, and I recommend for all students to be able to do this uh, every year. Uh, they're due in May, I think. How many um, do they have? Oh, it depends. They have you know, f a few thousand every year. Uh, from, and they all come from these different companies. There's a certain amount of money, and it's like another way of saying these companies are investing in you. And you can, just to be able to come find a job, just if, if you were sponsored by Accenture, you don't have to talk to, you know, you don't have, that's not saying, oh, you owe us anything. That is the cool part. They are saying you are worth it for other companies as well. And this is for you. We want to get you circulating in the job market. And that in a way is a way of telling uh, us that, you know, students, mentorship is coming from Grace Hopper and you can go and, and, and kind of talk to a bunch of companies and schools. Um, but I think the biggest thing for women, it, it can be uh, kind of fluid, but it can also be kind of set up. So I was saying that there was a Grace Hopper uh, Scholars event last night, and they had these tables set up where mentors were at every table, and people, all these students would go around to the table and give their 30 second, uh, kind of their elevator pitch. You know, what do they want to do? And um, that's a really powerful thing to have as you start looking for mentors. You say, I'm interested in computer science, and I don't really know what I want to do, but this is where I come from. This is what I've in been interested in. This is what I want to learn about. And if you can say that, people will already say, oh, well, I fit that bill. I don't fit that, but I know someone that does, and they can help you navigate. So hone a 30-second pitch that talks about who you are, where you come from, and where you want to go. Exactly. Okay. And you don't have to have it set in stone. That's the beauty of it. As millennials, young people, uh, you can have a person that's your age, that is in your same area, and you can just say, gosh, I'm having trouble with this and this, and you'll mm -hmm. feel comfort in that. Or you can go for someone older who's been there and who can at least be there to listen to you. Because if you don't have anyone to talk to, it's, it's very hard to keep inside. Mm -hmm. you, you really need to be able to express yourself. Uh, and, and for me, I have a few people that are older than me and I go to a few different people for different topics, more personal, uh, more school focused. And my supervisor at, at Brown University is a mentor for me. I got to see him last night just to talk to him about you know, research questions. The whole thing that he's taught me is to not be afraid to just ask. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a question, you're already at no. So the best thing, the, the worst thing that could happen is you're right back where you started. It's either, and if you get a yes, then you're, you're just a little bit higher up, up to obtaining your goal. So opening, opening yourself up to ask women and men 
and talk about what you want to do or mm-hmm. you think you want to do, those are the three parts that I think uh, will be a, will give you a successful mentorship experience. And but that's not easy for everyone to do, to to be willing to put yourself mm-hmm. out there. And and that's where I want to come back to you, yeah. Chelsea. You, you were talking yeah. about Susan Cain, yeah. who is the uh, New York Times best-selling author of the book Quiet. Her book is all about introverts mm-hmm. and, and their effect on the workplace and how they are almost a secret weapon yeah. of managers because they, have, they bring different styles to their work. You are an introvert. <laughs> so talk a little bit about what you learned from Susan Cain and how it it is changing the way you approach your career. Absolutely. Um, well, I have the blessing of hearing Susan Kane here, so I want to thank her again for coming and, and speaking to us at Grace Hopper. But I think um, what was great about Susan Kane's book for me is that um, my best friend's mom suggested I read it, and um, it, it really spoke to me because you know she was the one who recommended it. And reading it, it inspired me that mentorship doesn't always come in the form of um, conversations between you know, physical conversations between two people. It can come in a book. It can come in you watching someone and seeing how she behaves and, and trying to emulate that in yourself. And I think Susan Cain spoke to, to that power of introverts and how they're, they're reflective and they're taking more information in. And I'd never thought of mentorship coming in a book before. Um, and of course, it, it, her words spoke a lot to my experiences and it really empowered me to, to, to understand that it's okay to, to be reflective and to take time before you really reach out and make that first step. But um, she, of course, was, was encouraging women to still step out of your comfort zones when it's, when, when it's appropriate and can bring out the best version of yourself. Her, her book offers strategies mm-hmm. for introverts yes, uh, in yeah. terms of thinking about ways to get up your gumption, to, yeah. to speak yeah. out and, 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 and offer your opinion. Mm-hmm. Back to the conference, as we said, your whole family is here, not your parents who are <laughs> back home. Um, but. Uh, what are your impressions of this year's conference? Both of you are veterans now. Um, <laughs> how is this conference different? How is this conference better, bigger than, than ever before? Let's start with you, Chelsea. For myself, I this is my third year. So my first year at Grace Hopper, I came as a freshman. So I mean, my eyes are as wide as they could be. And I, I was taking in so much information and I'd only taken one CS class. So. Um, I was connecting so many dots the first year and now being here as a third year and seeing women who I've brought to this conference and my brother included, we were able to, to encourage him to, to join us as well. Um, it's just incredible to see the inspiration that has come out of the three years and um, the speakers who have spoken at Grace Hopper these past three years. I mean, I, I've written down their pieces of advice and I keep them with me every day. Cheryl Sandberg spoke to us last year and she said that um, She's been able to grow by writing three things that she's thankful for at the end of every day. And I've done that every day since I'd heard her speak at Grace Hopper. And does it make you, I've, I've read that too. Yeah, does it, yeah. the, the gratitude journal, yeah. this idea of, of pausing to give thanks. And does it, it works? Absolutely. Okay, this is. And I mean, I, she spoke to us this time last year and it's, it's changed my life every day since. Yeah. How about you, Ashley? So, um, I guess I'd like to speak about uh, the work that I've done to prepare for Grace Hopper and then how I'm seeing it come because to fruition. Because you are one of the organizers yeah, of this conference, yes, thinking I about mean, how to, to make it work. There are many people that are involved in this. I mean, every single person who's from setting the chairs up, you know, to, to set up the tables where people will eat, to people backstage, to you guys, to us, we are all beautifully part of this vision that is one vision, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, advancing women in technology and incorporating more women into this vision. But also we have our own goals, we have our own stories and, and you guys are able to capture that. And I'm, it's empowering to be able to hear and listen to all the stories that you guys are able to capture. Um, and they grow as Grace Hopper grows. One of the great things of this year's Grace Hopper is to see how people have learned to navigate if they're veterans and also have brought new people to the conference. Um, and it, it's kind of like, a family is growing Um, and I worked a lot with academia this you know this this year Uh, so we put together like an academic initiative set of YouTube videos and so I I worked on a video that told uh, newcomers like this is how you should prepare bring your resumes and bring you know two nice outfits three good ones you know write down the people's names that you're talking to if just a few tips like strong handshake if you're nervous maybe try this and um, being able to see that students are receptive and wanting to learn 
through all of the technological advancements, we're able to key in on those, those key factors that help everyone connect and stay connected. Uh, Facebook groups, Google groups. If you're an undergrad, there's a Google group for you. If you're a um, master's student, there's a Google group for you. And I actually talked to Chelsea about this, and now that they're set up, I was like, whoa! <laughs> great, great way of incorporating <laughs> questions in for millennials and then being able to in integrate everyone into the conversation. Um, so this idea of integration is also something that I've seen uh, work well uh, here at Grace Hopper more than, more than before. These I'm excited are, to see it growing. These are great strategies, great advice, great tips. This, you've been wonderful guests. I thank you so much. Uh, Ashley Connard and Chelsea Connard, thank you. And thank you for joining us. We will be back with theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Houston, Texas, right after this break. Was there a